hi everyone welcome to a new week thank you so much for watching my video on the factory tour for vivo i really appreciate all the views i've gotten this week it was really really encouraging considering the amount of effort i went to get that footage i really appreciate the views i hope that i'll continue to get more views as well on the other videos if you're new here very very welcome yes this channel is a fashion channel, believe it or not. But I have, I usually get a lot of questions when people discover that I was a Mandela Washington fellow. I'm going to explain what that means, but when people discover that, they always want to know more, they want to know about my experience, they want to know how beneficial it is, if they should apply and everything like that. And I thought that it's important to create this resource so that people can be able to just get the information without having to always look for a fellow to ask certain questions. And the truth is as well that some of the aspects of the application and some of the aspects of the interview do change once in a while just so that um, people are actually given a genuine opportunity to get into the program without being spoon fed by previous fellows. I hope that makes sense. I have also been on the other side um, of the seat where I marked applications so i kind of know how some of these things go and no i do not you do not mark for your country you mark for other countries so it's a whole process they try to make it as fair as possible and no i know the bits are there you do not have to pay there is no paying a politician so that you can get in there are no favorites or favors to get into the fellowship there are a lot of rumors like that that circulate because it seems like some certain people get in and others don't and no, there's no classism. In fact, I think sometimes they give more opportunities to people in rural, people who are doing more impact in the rural areas, even sometimes more than urban, because rarely do they get opportunities to do it. The one thing I would say is just get your English right and your grammar right, because it really does uh, make a difference in how people understand your application. So anyway, I'm going to explain all that in depth, but I think it's fair to explain what the fellowship is, what the other programs under the yearly umbrella are, and how you can plug into them. They will be in slide form. They will be, it will be very, very short. And then now I can explain my personal experience. Please note that I'm going to be specifically talking about my personal experience. Everybody had different experiences and mine is going to be in three parts. I can't do, I can't cover everything in one video. This video is basically to just explain what the fellowship is, explain um, application process tips on how to apply, explain um, how to prepare for interview, and explain what you need to prepare as you are about to go into the fellowship. And I trust many of you will be equipped to apply when it opens up again later in the year. And currently we are having the first, uh, I wouldn't say the first lot, but we're having the 2023 cohort leaving next month and I hope some of these tips will be helpful to you as well, especially the travel ones. So let's begin. What is YALI? YALI is the Young African Leaders Initiative that was launched by former US President Barack Obama as a signature effort to invest in the next generation of Africans who 60% are below the age of 35. So YALI has three different programs that I'm aware of, the Mandela Washington Fellowship, the YALI Regional, Regional Leadership Center, and the YALI Network. So I'll avoid reading too much of this because you can get them all on the websites written below. So the Mandela Washington Fellowship for Young African Leaders is an exchange program um, and you participate it in three parts, business and entrepreneurship, civic engagement, and public management. You go to the U.S. for six weeks to the institutions, colleges, and universities that have partnered with the fellowship, and you go there for classroom learning, experiential learning, community outreach, cultural experiences, and all that. You are eligible to apply if you are below the age of 35 be basically because it's special uh, category of 21 to 24 year olds they are open to people from all sorts of backgrounds 
whether you have a different sexual orientation, race, color, religion, um, economic status, um, even education status, they don't discriminate as long as you qualify. Your English has to be very, very good. Um, you cannot be related to someone who works for the U.S. Embassy, U.S. aid, or uh, U.S. government entity. The program is open to people residing in um, Sub-Saharan Africa. And even if you are a resident of the countries, but you're not in the country, you can still apply. If you've already done the program before, you cannot apply. Next, we have the Yali Regional Center. So for the specific slide you're seeing, I've written East Africa, Nairobi, because the regional centers are three. There is the East Africa, West Africa, and South Africa. So the West African one is hosted in Ghana. The South African one is hosted in South Africa. And then the East African one is hosted in Kenya, in Nairobi. So there's also another one, I think, in Senegal. So these centers are hubs for the continent. Basically, the curriculum is um, a bit different because it's a bit more localized, but it is still in the three tracks for um, business entrepreneurship, public management, and civic leadership. It has way more activities because of how regional it is and way more partnerships um, that are locally based. Eligibility for this one is from 18 to 35. So as long as you finished high school, you're eligible to apply. And also English is a requirement. And of course you apply according to the region you are in. So for East Africa, you apply if you live in the region and the countries are listed on that slide. Eligibility criteria um, is listed on this slide and you can see you have to really demonstrate leadership. Um, you have to be really engaged in your community. You have to work co cooperatively, have social communication skills and attitude, demonstrate knowledge and skill and commit to apply leadership skills um, that you've learned. I have also seen people who were in this specific program, regional leadership, taken into um, MWF Yali because um, they're already making so much impact they they were allowed to also join the Mandela Washington Fellow so do not dismiss this one because you really want Mandela Washington Fellowship um, yeah but I don't know if right now there's really that transitional um, effect anymore but I know that there are some fellows who've done both so the Yali network is a digital network that was established as a diplomacy tool to help the United States expand um, reach for of in-person exchange programs. So they have various, various programs, which is listed in the next slide. So you can participate in all these, whether you've been a fellow or not, whether you just want to, to be part of Yali, the Yali network on Facebook. It has a very big Facebook page and you just want to be involved in changing things for your community. Whether you are a fellow or not, you can join the Yali network. So if you are in the Yali network, you get all the emails about these other programs. You are notified when they are open and also notified for other um, activities and other um, programs that the U.S. Embassy and the U.S. aid may have outside of Yali. So do not limit yourself to Yali if you don't qualify for Yali or your time or you've passed the age uh, of Yali. Just know that the opportunities are there and you'll always be notified on email of other opportunities, whether they are Yali opportunities or not. So I hope that now you get the gist of it, um, what the programs are about under the yearly umbrella please please check the website it has more information i just wanted to give you what it is and who is eligible so that at least if you know you're eligible you can go to the website and just look for more information and please understand that you cannot fake your application you cannot fake your community impact they do check and you need to have evidence so it's very very important that you're sincere in your application it's very very important you do not cook stories or anything like that and please understand that the yearly programs are very, very competitive and they do try and take the top people. And there are countries in Africa, Kenya, South Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, um, because it's sub-Saharan Africa, very, very competitive, very many applications, very many eligible people. So just because you're not picked doesn't mean that you're not good enough for the fellowship always just keep trying honestly i applied in 2016 and i not 2016 2014 and i did not get in i was very discouraged 
and I actually thought that they were having a bias against people in the arts or in fashion and when I applied again in 2016 I got in and I wouldn't say that um, I'm so special that I got in I did I did pray a lot I kid you not I prayed a lot and I really really thought that whatever opportunity I got um, by going to the US was going to be beneficial and it has been very very beneficial especially just being immersed in a different culture with people who think differently from you and I'm not just talking about the Americans I'm talking about the Africans I was with as well in my class so in a nutshell this is what usually happens the universities in the US also compete to host Africans in the program so it's not just you are picked the schools are not just automatically picked they are actually they actually have to apply to host African fellows and they are checked and then they are approved and they each come up with their own program according to whatever track it is that you applied for remember there are three tracks civic business and public so um, yeah it's divided amongst that in my year we were a thousand fellows so each university was getting 25 students and you're mixed up from different countries so it is not all Kenyans in one school and things like that no you're mixed up like in my school Clark Atlanta University I was the only Kenyan so I got to experience different cultural perspectives from the, my, the other fellows in the other countries so another thing is apart from um, so that generally just means that you're going to get a very different experience from someone who's going to another school. For me, I was doing business and entrepreneurship track, so Clark's program was very different from another school that was also doing the same. So each school also comes up with its program. And then, as much as you've gone there as a student, you also have a lot of power in terms of the feedback you give about that school. If the feedback about the school is not good, most times, they will not host fellows again so it's very very important to be very sincere with your feedback when you go to the school so i hope that that makes sense i know uh, it makes more sense for the people who've been who've been picked to go right now so maybe this information is more relevant to you but if you ever get that opportunity please keep that in mind because you are not going there because you don't know anything you're going there to exchange ideas you're going there as a professional in your field you're going there to represent your country with the excellence you're doing on the continent so do not feel inferior because you've gone to an american institution and they're teaching you different lessons you're actually there to exchange ideas with americans and with your fellow africans keep that in mind when you're going for the fellowship i hope that is very very clear so <laughs> let's begin with my experience oh. In the application process, in our year, we were 50,000 fellows. So we were very, very many. And they were supposed to shortlist us to 1,000. So 50,000 is for the whole continent. Please um, remember that you have to be a resident of Africa. To apply, you have to be an African resi residing in Africa. So even if you've traveled to another country, but generally your physical address is in, is in Africa, you can apply for the fellowship but if you are a diasporian probably you could you cannot so um there are people who also applied and were in school or they were learning something and all that it really just depends on how you feel you can balance out your time and arrange your schedule so just know that you're going to commit for six weeks and it's a long time to be away for um things that will really really need you to be there so plan yourself accordingly anyways um so we were 50,000 they had to narrow down to a thousand and each country is given um a number of fellows they are going to get from there so i think kenya at the time we were taking 40 fellows if i'm not wrong it's either 40 or 60 i can't remember right now um so they of course and then they further divide you into the tracks so one of the things you have to make sure that you apply for the right track please do not apply for the wrong track I know sometimes people get confused on which track to apply for, especially people who are in civic and public management. It can be very confusing. The reason it can be confusing is if you're doing something for your community on your own accord and maybe you work for the government, that could be a bit confusing 
into whether or not you want to apply for public management, which generally uh, people who work in government institutions apply for, or you want to apply for civic leadership, which is more about the community aspect. Business and entrepreneurship is also um, very community based, like it's about the impact you're doing in your community as well with your business. It doesn't have to be physical, the physical um, benefits, it can also be intellectual, like there are very many ways you can apply for it. So for me, my application was based on um, different aspects, different things I have done within the fashion industry and also within community. So within community mostly means church because I was very active in church, I'm still active in church. And I used that as part of my application because I was using it to empower the young people in church and also um, the fashion industry in just the different aspects I have I have worked with, especially the event I did in 2010 with Dress Up Kenya and the impact it had on the designers who participated in it. So um, the questions, I do not remember. Application, I do not have. But uh, my advice to you would be, especially with the essay questions, because you do have access to the questions while you're applying, is start the process early. Please do not start your application late. Start early, write it in Word, think through it. If you have to, um, use um, Grammarly to just edit your application to make sure the grammar is right. And then um, copy paste it into the form and you're allowed to actually save to an extent of where you've reached and then continue. And I think you can also go back and edit it. But my advice is start early, finish it, move on with your life and continue with life. Do not apply and then start obsessing over it and waiting for emails and waiting to see if, um, you know, like waiting for each and every process because they do give you the dates of each process. Don't do that. You'll get very, very stressed. The most important thing is that if you're doing anything in line with what you applied for, continue doing it. It will really, really help you much later when you're doing the interview process. And it also helps you if you are not picked in this year to do your, to, to go for the fellowship. Continuing to do the work has more, gives you more leverage to maybe get selected in the next time. Because it shows that it wasn't about the fellowship, it was about what it is you are doing. So please do not take it as so much about going to experience um, traveling and going to the US and I'm not saying that you will not experience that but I'm just saying it's important that you make your application to be more than just about that. Hope that is clear. The interview stage is usually very very exciting but it's also the, another stage of elimination. So what happens in the interview stage is, now, is that they are going to give each um, they are basically going to narrow down on the list of the people who will be selected for the final. So what happens in the interview stage, they don't necessarily choose the exact number of people because sometimes some people are not able to go for the fellowship so that means you might be replaced by someone who is in a waiting list or something like that. So the interview stage, please be prepared. Whatever it is you wrote in your application, you better remember it because the truth is most of the time the interview is in the next year in May and you applied in September. So you need to remember what you applied for, which is why it's important to just write exactly what you're doing. Have evidence um, of what you're doing. One of the things I did is that I had a lot of pictures of what I did. At that time, you couldn't just tell someone to go on social media. It wasn't, it was, social media was there, but you didn't really use it to market yourself. So I printed pictures, I printed them and I took them to the interview. And because I really, I and I also took my certificate, like I, I took anything that would be evidence of what I said is what, um, is what I do. And the, there's a panel usually that will interview you, they interview you in groups and they interview you as individuals, and then um, they have summaries of what you've done and your application, and they ask you questions based on what you wrote. So it's very, very important that you're sincere. Some of these interview processes probably do change, but I have also interviewed fellows before and that is the way I've mentioned it is exactly how we did it. 
it could change from year to year so I don't know how it is right now but that's how we went through it so be prepared the interview go early there were people who went late in our year and it was just a mess because you completely just miss your opportunity they always communicate very early when you've applied for a program like that and you've been shortlisted and you know you've been shortlisted your email is your best friend if you're in rural rural anywhere ensure that you have access to the internet because you will need to keep checking your emails because you'll always be updated on very various things you'll be doing so i hope those are good enough tips dress of course dress smartly and comfortably you don't have to necessarily dress officially but just be smart i hope that makes sense because if you're a fashion designer i don't think they're necessarily expecting you to come in a suit but being wearing a suit is not necessarily <laughs> um smart or smart you can dress smartly even in your nice uh, ankara dress or nice african shirt or whatever just be smart be smart neat everything and be prepared for the interview don't panic it can be very intimidating but it's worth um preparing and they do understand that people do panic and genuinely if you're really doing something worth it um they'll give you an opportunity another thing is there are certain questions that are trick questions and depending on how you answer them, you could actually miss the whole opportunity um, of going for the fellowship and that's also usually another reason why some written applications don't go through because people mess up on that question. And the question does change how they write it but if you know, you know. I will not say which one it is because once you say it, people know so just be alert. Once you get shortlisted, there is orientation, which will happen uh, most of the time in each country and you are going to be invited to a place where they will explain to you everything. You, they will answer a lot of the questions. They are very, very thorough and they also will explain a lot of things that probably happened in previous cohorts that you should avoid and things like that. One of the things they really stressed for us was how to keep our documents because there are people who reached certain places and did not have their documents i'll explain more later so um, just expect orientation so you're going to be oriented on the program you're going to be oriented on what to expect when you arrive what they will provide for you american culture american people um yeah so and also probably a bit more about um, the other countries that are participating and yes so you will just get the gist of the the gist of the program and what's expected from you so it can be very daunting especially if you've never left the country like for me it was actually my first time out of Kenya so I appreciated the extra information it seemed like a lot but I appreciate the thoroughness it was very very helpful so I'm going to get a bit more into that next so that you can understand what you need to do to prepare i'll do this in point form so bear with me as i start so number one once you've gotten the congratulations message in your email completely update your linkedin i know here in kenya we tend to neglect our linkedin sometimes if you are you've been shortlisted for the fellowship update your linkedin have all your information on your linkedin because uh we were advised that in the us people actually take linkedin very very seriously and people would rather follow your linkedin than keep taking business cards please carry business cards either way because you need them in our year the fellowship printed for us our business cards um because um they they did personalized ones with yearly mandela washington fellow because the some of the people you are meeting already know that they are meeting yearly fellows so it's easier for someone to remember um that they met you because you are a fellow and they just write your basic information like your email because for number at that time whatsapp wasn't as popular as it is now in the us so it was mostly emails that we were using so just have your own business cards as well it may be very very helpful and also just update your linkedin follow people on linkedin when you are there and just get that straightened out it will really really help you ensure that you have a valid passport because you will need one 
um, to apply. Um, they will ask you for documents and yes, you're going to get a visa appointment and they will do it for you. And please understand that this fellowship is fully funded. You're not going to pay anything. That is one of those things that people misunderstand about the fellowship. There is no money that you remove. They take care of everything. When I say everything, I mean everything. So I will explain to you what you need to do for your own personal self, but just ensure that passport is on you. Ensure you have a valid passport. Ensure you have that passport when you are applying. You know that time you were applying the previous year? That's when you should actually take care of your passport. But because you know how long the process can take at times, do not try and do these emergency passport situations. Get your passport early. There are certain shots you will need to get before you travel. So the shots, um, okay, now I don't know if COVID is a must, but at the time we were going, um, yellow fever, I think there was a yellow fever outbreak in Tanzania at that time. So yellow fever was compulsory. So we got it. Um, yeah, I think those are the only shots. Of course, if you had the other ones that you got when you were a child, then you're fine. In, just in case you did get them just know that it's going to be on the list of requirements which of course as i've said they, they are very thorough with their information so you will know what you need because you're going to actually fill in a medical form so you will know what you need to write another thing uh, before i forget to mention which i'm sure i mentioned when i was explaining is whether or not you have a disability or you're living with a disability doesn't matter they also don't really care about sexual orientation they don't care about all that they just care about what you're doing and how it's affecting your community especially if it's good work so please don't discriminate yourself because of that including religious it doesn't really matter just make sure you don't have a police record as well please make sure you, you don't have you will not be asked for a certificate of good conduct but please note they do, do they do background checks so just ensure that you're on the right side of the law and don't break any laws or anything like that i would advise you to fill the forms you've been sent for immediately don't wait for the deadline and anything like that you know anything can happen electricity can disappear internet can disappear anything can happen fill in your forms early fill them in early send them in early the earlier you do it the better okay i thought it was a joke when i was told by my dad to pack my luggage a week early and it practically saved me from a lot of headaches and heartache as i said they they are very thorough with the itinerary they give you and part of the things you are suggested for are the kind of clothes you need to carry you're told to carry certain formal certain cultural kenyans please carry cultural please carry cultural it will it's always so embarrassing how kenyans don't prepare for cultural and then the other countries shine please carry something cultural even if you all agree and please agree on one thing it's usually just better and even if you decide you're going to do Masai or you decide you're going to do Kiko or you decide you're going to do Kanga please just pick something cultural do not go without anything cultural I've, I've really stressed that and I've stressed that from my heart anyway um they give you a list of the kind of clothes and shoes you need to carry so it is important that you prepare you are told so early because you are told almost a month before you travel just start packing and start thinking about your wardrobe for the next six weeks yes you will have probably you'll have laundry services it really depends on the school you've gone to and what kind of laundry services they will give you because the schools are not all the same um in the school i went to they gave us they, there was a washing machine and a dryer in the room and i'll explain that next next week when i'm talking about my life in clark um so plan your wardrobe put it in the suitcase and make sure you just don't wear those clothes that you've packed for the next couple of weeks and if you're the type of person who adds and loses weight very fast please think through that as well um the shoes you need to carry um yeah all your think about your hair think try and make your hair just before you travel if you have to and just think through your wardrobe if you have access to um in those at that time the cameras on the phones were not very good so i know um i um, thank god for our year we had um a fellow from tanzania who had a very good camera he had carried his professional camera and i think majority of our photos were from him 
and we were very diligent in taking those photos. I think we took so many photos. I don't know if other cohorts managed to take photos. We took photos of everything and everything we did. So we have many, many photos for our cohort in Clark. So um, take as many photos as you want. Um, also, when you post the photos um, on social media, tag, tag Yali, um, tag the American Embassy, just tag any institution, tag the institution who's hosting you, tag, tag, tag. So those photos are important, so do take them. Even if you don't want to share them on social media, they are important to share because it's part of um, documenting the fellowship and how successful it is. And also just for you, like for me, preparing this video, I've really reminisced a lot about my fellowship. So take photos. Things you need to think about um, are the weather. So also check the weather of the place you will go, uh, what kind of weather they get, how hot it is, how cool it is, and things like that. That would probably also affect what you are carrying in terms of the clothes um, that you're going to carry. I was in Atlanta and it was pretty hot. It was like our January weather in Nairobi. You know how hot it is in January with a touch of humidity, but not as humid as Mombasa. I hope that makes sense to Kenyans. Anyway, yeah. So it was pretty hot. Um, so, and Americans love their AC. Their AC now becomes like our cold season. It's so cold. It was such a big contrast. But yes, um, yes, it was very, very hot. So keep that in mind. Keep think about the weather. And also because it's summer, um, the program is always during summer. The days are longer. So that just means the sun will set at 9 p.m. I've told you early so that you don't get as shocked as I was. But it was very, very interesting walking around at 9 p.m. outside. Yeah, so that was very interesting and amazing. So, and also the sunrise is very early. So there are days are long and their nights are shorter. So it's very, very interesting. Please carry your phone. Put that phone on aeroplane mode. And do not roam. Do not roam. Do not be cheated by Safaricom about roaming. Do not roam. You will be sorted when you're in the States, um, you will get an American line, so don't worry about it. But of course, people will still need to access you in Kenya. Just put it on airplane mode and just use Wi-Fi. That's the advice I'll give you. If you choose to do otherwise, you're on your own. Carry cash. Carry your own cash, emergency cash. Carry it in dollars, please. Do not go with Kenyan shillings. The only Kenyan shillings you need to have is probably when you come home and you need to take a taxi back to your house. Or use M-Pesa, I guess. So ensure that um, you have your own money Yes, you will be given money It really varies. I kid you not it varies. It really depends on there's a standard amount you're given when you leave Kenya But the institution you go to will give you money according to what they are giving you and what they're not giving you So that is how they determine how much money you will get um, So I cannot give you a, I cannot tell you a standard fixed amount This is what you will get and on top of it right now with all the things that have happened in the world with the economies of course the amounts have changed so please keep that in mind carry your laptop um, because you will need it if you are working some institutions give you a computer lab so maybe you do not need to so it depends on your institution will also send you a letter of orientation and everything like that so depending on what they are offering you you could decide to carry your own laptop or decide to use their computer lab Carry a travel adapter that usually catches a lot of people off guard because their sockets are not like ours. So, carry a travel adapter that can basically get into any socket. You can be able to use any socket. You can get them in any electronic shop or any supermarket. They sell those travel adapters. Get one for yourself. Please do not think that you're going to borrow one from your other fellows and use and share. That won't happen. Carry your own. It the logistics will be managed by IREX. I will write what IREX means down here. They will handle your logistics from the time you are leaving Kenya to the time you reach the institution that's hosting you. And then the institution will take over um, your itinerary from there. And then IREX will take over again when bringing you back home. They are very, very thorough, as I've said. Check your emails, check your emails, check your emails. You will be explained for every single thing that you need to do and every single thing that you need to expect. Of course, if something goes haywire, it's important to always communicate with IREX. Anyone who communicates with you about the fellowship, whether it's someone who works at the embassy, 
someone who works at IREX, your fellow fellows from your country have their numbers. It's very, very important. It will help you in cases of emergency or just generally it's good to keep in touch. And also, after the fellowship and you come back to Kenya, there are activities you will do. You will still need those contacts. So it's very, very important to always just keep in touch um, with those who will be in charge of your itinerary and so that nothing happens to you. I hope that is clear. Well, I will end this specific episode here. It's already longer than I intended it to be, but I just realized there's a lot to say. If you have any questions specifically about this specific segment, write them in the comment section. I will respond to all of them. Um, it's important that you are well prepared and everything like that. Um, if you want me to address anything like a rumor or you had someone got into the fellowship like this like that i really wouldn't be able to give any um any feedback that would be helpful in such situations because personally i know that the process of getting into the fellowship is fair and if anyone got unfairly i really wouldn't know anything about it because at least the time i did it it was fair um also please note that over the years a lot of things have changed covid also affected a lot of the fellowship so there are some people who basically will not experience the fellowship the way i experienced it i was also very fortunate enough to be in the last cohort that uh u.s president barack obama was still president so definitely a different experience from the people who came after so as i said at the very beginning it's my personal experience what i went through i'm just explaining it in video form so that you can understand please do not assume that everything will be the same there are some aspects that will definitely be the same because it's a formula that works and then there are some things that will change because times have changed programs have changed a few things have changed um with a new government first with the trump administration and then now biden administration of course there are a few changes that are very very different because this was more of a passion project for former U.S. President Barack Obama than it is for the current presidents. Not saying that they don't support it. So far, we thank God that they've still been continuing to fund uh, the fellowship and it has been beneficial to very, very many people. I would definitely encourage you to enjoy the fellowship. I will definitely encourage you that whether or not you get into the fellowship, do not stop working for your community. It's very, very important that the work you do um, that got you into the fellowship or that did get you into the fellowship continues to have the impact in your community as you had intended it to be from the beginning or even changes to um, whatever it is you um, you end up adapting it to. Please note as well that everyone's experience is different. The fellowship gives different opportunities to different people so it's not going to be copy paste not everyone gets the same thing so i will explain my us experience next week i hope you tune in for that and i hope you've enjoyed this if you have any questions please do let me know um, in the comment section not on whatsapp i know some of the people who know me personally like whatsapping me i would rather you ask it in the comment section so that everyone benefits i will see you next week bye mm -hmm.